Right, when's your 21st? Are we all invited or what? Uh, we'll see how we go on Saturday. I'll see if I'm busy. Hello and welcome to Burning Questions. Um, I'm in a different studio today, so I'm just trying to make sure my head's in 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 shot relatively well. We've got a new cast here. Basically, we've we've said we're going to just clean the slate and start again. Tim O'Connor, wonderful to have you on board. This is not your first Burning Questions, but uh, you must be happy to be back on. Start of 2022 could be a sign of things to come. We have to be back on. Good to be here, Bon. I you've, uh, appreciate you flicking me the questions uh yesterday but there's a glaring omission nothing political in these questions i i'm, I'm staggered it's all racing based what's yeah, going on don't, don't worry i'll get to that later as as i've already told you off air i'm personally responsible my tweet for the fact that novak Djokovic will not be gaining that medical exemption he's had his visa cancelled and he was told by the victorian government it was due to that tweet from um from jay bon uh so that's okay because i don't think anyone would have supported him anyway he's he's um he's a low life jack you're not a low life. Great to have you on board, mate. Uh, I think only the second interstate invader, well, New South Wales invader. How are you feeling today? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Jace. Are you uh, are you ready? Because at least one of these questions, you're going to be going head to head with Andy Gath, and it could get a bit orcs, as you young kids say. Are you prepared for that or what, young man? Uh, hopefully. I've watched a few of them, and Andy seems to know what he's talking about, so we'll see how we go. You're a pretty serious young man. I'm glad to see that smile on your face. We can already see the pearly whites. We'll get you giggling at some point. Giggling like a little schoolgirl. That's what we do on Burning Questions. And Andrew, as soon as I jump on, you get a smile on your face. You said it's because you're overheating. You've got heat stroke or something from the car. But really, you just lo- you just love looking at me, don't you? You just love seeing me. Oh, yeah. I listen to you on the radio, but to see your face just makes, you know, just makes me weak, Jace. Did you, did you hear my little rendition of Gold Digger at the end? No, I didn't actually. Sorry. I was getting me... Booster shot. Oh, were you really? Yeah. Look at you go. Omicron safe. Andy Gath. All right. Sponsors. They're the most important part of the show. All the questions are, but sponsors are pretty important. Whether you're celebrating a win or shoveling in the stables, you want your staff to look their very best. And you do that with uniforms from hip pocket workwear and safety. They have you covered for clothing, protective equipment, and plenty more. Check out hippocketworkwear.com.au. You can't see it right now, but I'm just going with this... um, this open shoulder, uh, open shirt sort of look at the moment. It's not hip pocket workwear, but just letting people know what I'm going with. First question. Will the Vic Bread form stand strong in the earliest events? I'll start with you, Tim O'Connor. Well, I think so. Obviously, um, they're pretty open races the first couple of Bendigo, aren't they? But I think, uh, at least in the first race, I think the winner will come from either So What or Batman Barry. I know Batman Barry didn't. Uh, go through the the final in the four year olds, but he he um, ran a really good race in the silver, and he won a, a heat. Obviously, and made a mistake in the semi, but he ran really well in that race as well. So, I think it will stand up in the first race. I'm with um, So What or Batman Barry. Haven't decided yet, but uh, you've marked them four dollars and ten dollars respectively, Bon. And uh, I think Common Courtesy is the one to beat in the second race, and obviously been going really well. Um, through behind Majida in the semi and the final, three wide in the last lap in the final. It was a really good run and has beaten AJ Breezy Rose uh, before recently. I like AJ Breezy Rose as a bit of a roughie. Of course, didn't come through the Vic Bread form. I think uh, she's a six-year-old or somewhere around that mark. But uh, I'll be playing AJ Breezy Rose in common courtesy. So to answer the question, I think the form will stand up. It'll uh, it'll either win the races or, or go very close to it. Uh, Tim O'Connor, the top man's given us an entire Friday form panel there. That was that was <laughs> wonderful. You don't need to tune in tomorrow to Trot's Live at 10.30 for the first two races at least. Has October rain been scratched? Well, leaving that one out, I'm, I'm staying, steering clear of October rain. Lovely horse, oh. but not for me. Uh, Andy, it'll, I suspect it will stand strong. These younger horses, they say it's hard to compete at Metro level. Um, but really, I think they're coming out of the elite races against their gender and generation, and I think it will stand strong. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Start of the year, I like to agree with you straight away. Uh, just get over and get me quota up for the for the year. So, um, yeah, no, I think um, one of these, you know, they're great horses, even though they might be fringe horses when they get against the really elite horses. But sometimes going through a series like a Vic Red or British Crown can make some of these horses. And, you know, I think the first race, um, you know, October rain, so wide and Batman Barry going to be really hard to beat. 
and in the mares race, you know, you've got Tom Curtis in, Shay Ella, he's just been airborne throughout the three-year-old series. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll stand up. Um, again, if the series was too hard for them, I think a lot of trainers would have turned their horses out. So, obviously, they've come through it pretty well. And I think you'll find going forward, anything that's competed through this series will be racing well in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm saying it'll stand strong as well. And I've top tips, Shay Ella, because I, that form through the three-year-old, every single run was outstanding through heat, semi-final and final. It's just... You're flying under the radar, and I hope the price assessors believe she's flying under the radar as well. Now, uh, Jack, this will be a shock to some of our viewers, but you're not Victorian. So I don't expect you to have a great handle on everything that happened through the Vic Bread Super Series, but generally speaking, on a, on a generic level, these young horses that have raced in Elite Series, Breeders' Challenge, Breeders' Crown, and then they go to Metropolitan level, they normally compete very well. Yeah, as you said, both of you and Andy, you know, Horses that race in Group One level races, coming back to you know Metro Saturday nights, it usually tends in their favour. So I'm sure they'll be more than competitive. How old are you, Jack? You've got the AirPods in. Um, polo shirt. Well, that's not really an age specific thing, but how old are you, Jack? Uh, Twenty. Holy jeez. Yep, I remember that. That was 22 years ago. Question two of the burning questions, brought to you by the Fresh Connection. Who export Australian fresh fruit to more than 35 countries, headed up by Damien Glengarry. He's the export manager, and he does what Tim O'Connor would say. He loves the word fabulous. I'll say he does a fabulous job this week. Definitely. Fresh Connection specialise in citrus, table grapes, cherries, and mangoes. Freshconnection.com.au. We ask all our new guests what their favourite fruit is. Jack, what's yours? Um, not much of a fruit man, but... Jack hasn't had like that bit of fruit since, since he was nine. Apple. <laughs> Not bad. Do we export apples? No, but you'll try a lot of the Fresh Connection. Don't worry about that. You first this time, young man. Can Ravani cross the champ? He's watching you. He's just above you in this uh, in this Brady Bunch type situation. And how much blood is shed in the mile, even if she can't? So, I mean, you can't make half a decision here, I wouldn't have thought, young buck. Are you going to fly the gate or are you not? Uh, most likely, I'd say yes. Uh, not 100% sure if we can cross, but I haven't seen a trotter come out as quick as she can, so I don't think we're definitely worth a crack. Do you think, being a 20-year-old, and he's, you know, I think he's about 39 now, I'm 42, are you looking at Tornado Valley and saying, you're a bit of an old bloke now, your legs won't, if I go for you, your legs won't keep up with me? Uh, probably not in that type of way, but I'm just hoping my little filly's probably got the fresher legs in her, maybe being a bit younger and... I've done a few replays on Tornado Valley and he has come out pretty quick in the past. So I'm not 100% confident, but with him drawing low and me drawing wider, it'd probably help a little bit as well. Bloody Jack, he's watched replays of Tornado Valley. Watch every group one when he's ever had. You just should be watching it live, Jack, anyway. Uh, Andy, that 1,609 metre start makes things interesting because it, it does favour inside horses a little bit more, but I'm sure you're ready that Tornado Valley is going to get attacked by young Jack Callahan at the start. Yeah, no, I watch the replays too. I've watched the live a couple of times as well. So, uh, no, she, she's got terrific gate speed and, you know, she's a really quality mare going forward. She's got a beautiful weight about her. She can run fast time. You know, obviously the only time she's been beating in Australia was over the, the longer trip of the 2300. Um, the only difference, again, the mile starts sort of a little bit advantageous for us being drawn on the inside. And also the gate goes a little bit slower in Victoria than New South Wales. So it does help the inside horses a little bit. There's more intel for you, Jack, so sorry to give it to you. Um, not only that, but, you know, have horse will travel is probably equally as fast as Tornado Valley at the gate as well, too. So um, you've got two of mine to contend with. So, um, yeah, I, we know Tornado Valley's won most of his races in front. He's got terrific gate speed. He'll be there to lead. Um, if we get cross, we get cross. But Ben Furry, Ty Fern did go 26-3 once to hold the lead in one of these races and still good enough to win. So um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, he's a great horse, uh, Glen Furry, Ty Fern. Um uh, by the way, Jack, if you want to put in a bullying charge against Andy Gath for those comments, I, I'm, I, you've got witnesses here, and we're putting this online as well. Uh, so I'm going to get a great response here. Andy, what chance out of 100% the Tornado Valley leads? I think 90%. <laughs> Jack, what chance at Elder Baron Ravani leads? 91. <laughs> there's 181% chance that, that, that these two – it's incredible, really. Um, it's I think three Jack's not, Jack, if he's tied mine up. <laughs> I think Jack, uh, Jack's not lying, though. I think I think both of them think that they can lead. What do you reckon, Talk? 
Well, I, I feel like I'm in the right. I feel like I'm Chris Alpha with Wobbly here. I've got speed on the inside and the outside. I'm just going to snag back. Um, look, I don't know who's going to lead. I would, if I had to, um, if I had to have a bet, and they were both two dollars, I'd back Tornado Valley. Better draw. Um, the other fact is, uh, Jack Source has got tremendous speed, of course, in the replays. You see it all, but racing certainly inferior opposition than she'll meet on uh, on the weekend. So that, that that's a consideration to me. And Tornado Valley's led and, and beaten the best numerous times. So uh, I'm confident that um, Tornado Valley will hold the lead. But uh, it, the, the question's framed quite well, Bond. If, if this early speed battle could uh, bring someone else from the back of the field into the race. So uh, I'm interested whether or not you think one of these two are going to win it or is there someone from the back, uh, Have Horse Will Travel or, or Wobbly or someone else that can win the race? I think it's I think it's wide open. Majestic Man has proven he can he can bounce back from a bad run, so and he's a he's a specialist smiler. Uh, I even thought Sundon's Courage, who's 101 into 40s, is absolutely flying, but would need them to go truly frenetically ballistic. Like both you know, Kate and Jack just to completely lose their mind screaming at each other uh, after 600 meters. Um, and I gave Queen of Crime a good chance of being the one that can drop in behind the leader and. Look, if you'd asked me six weeks ago, I'd said Quinnick Prime just doesn't deserve to be here. Now I'm I'm almost I'm pretty well convinced after the last couple of starts. Uh, who's the best ruffie in the race, Andy? Um, oh, I don't know. I can't. Your horse, Andy. Our horse will travel, I reckon. Yeah, I think he's a little hope of getting fence behind the leader too. He, he, he's exceptional out, and if they really burn early, there might be a gap there for him. So. If he, you know, for him to be a winning chance, he needs to get on the fence. So, um, and that, that's possible of happening. Well, I'm sitting on the fence as well because I reckon Aldebaran and Ravani is quicker. And I think the the pole mark and draw isn't ideal for Tornado Valley, who's now, you know, he's, he's, he's 41. He's about my age in, in horse terms. Like he's, he's getting on. So his legs can't possibly be quite as quick early as they were, but that mile start's going to be really critical. Third question brought to us by APG. Their sales coming up pretty soon. And as long as Omicron, doesn't totally swamp the nation. I'm hoping to get to the Gold Coast. It'll swamp the nation. Uh, anyway, question three. Is the winning streak of Yank a sign or a mirage? That's Faraday Hanover, Andy. It's got four wins on the board. Never looks that impressive winning. But keeps winning, and I think it'll win again. Yeah, it's a good chance it's going to find the top again. Um, Connor's got a really good rapport with this filly and seems to settle pretty well. Uh, most times it has got a fairly cheap lead, so it's going to have to do a little bit of work this time. Uh, we know it's a step up in class, but it did beat Mon Amir last start, his first emergency for the Bendigo Cup. So, um, you know, has beat quality opposition before. Again, when it first came over, racing three old Phillies races, uh, being American bred, has given away sort of six months in its age group. So, um, again, it's had time to sort of climatise and get a little bit older and take them on. So, yeah, I think it's going to find the top and it's definitely the one to beat. Jack's got one of the rare honours of being one of our guests that hasn't eaten while he's been on the show. There's been a lot of new guests that decide they're going to get a pad thai or uh, maybe just a little curry to have on air, but he's decided to be very professional as Toc sucks down the coffee. And maybe Jack needs to. He was wiping the sleep out of his eyes a moment ago. Jack, have you done the replays for Faraday Hanover? Do you, do you think it's going to win? I've actually watched it a few times live, Jay Von. Wow. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she seems to have been like really good form at the moment. So I can't really knock off. So keeps winning. So she probably will again. Yeah. He's gone from Jason to J Bond. See, this is how friendships get made. Jack, uh, well done, brother. Talk uh, thoughts here. I, I, I go back every time I see her race, I think, well, that, that didn't blow me away, but if she gets the lead, there's no way they beat her. And I think she can control it from the breeze anyway. That's right. Bond banger. She can. I think she can. Um, <laughs> Just before I do answer that question, I've got some breaking news here. Uh, David Moran tells me Artie's pulled up really good, so that's a good result for uh, anyone following Artie next week. I Andy clipped me at the trials the other day for um, following Sal around to get a comment after his horse won the trial. Yeah, well, did, we might talk about that in a moment. Did he actually put these on there? When he did, did he give you the exclamation points? Did, did it say really good in? I'll put those on there. But, oh, yeah. uh, Okay. That little does bit, change the context. No. A little, little bit of creative, yeah. Okay. He's that really well. But Faraday Hanover, Faraday Hanover, however you want to call it, call her. Um, I've been a big fan of her last prep as well. So uh, I think I've back to two, maybe the two times she was backable this prep, and she's impressed me right the way through. I think she finds a top. I think she wins. Uh, she's one of my best bets on the card, and I haven't seen a price yet, but hopefully they throw up two bucks. I think you marked a dollar seventy bond. I'd nearly take that. I reckon she's um. She's a pretty good horse. 
Well, you can have a bet at Bond Bet if you want. Dollar seventy, you can you can have, you have a bet anytime you want. Credit bet or what? Huh? Credit bet? Do you do credit bets? <laughs> no, no, you can no. That can get people <laughs> into trouble. Yeah. The last of our burning questions is with thanks to Felvo Fruits, Jack. Little, I don't know if they, they do apples. Uh, no, they're, they're table grapes. Specialist in table grapes since the 1960s. Michael and Josie Felvo are keeping the tradition going. I love it. It's all about family. And everyone loves their grapes. Keep an eye out for Felvo Fruits. You know you'll love them. Question four is, and this is for you, Jack, first, with Spirit of St. Louis. Who will hometown hero Torrid follow in the cup? I look at this race and I say I don't see any natural horse for Torrid Saint to hand up to. Spirit of St. Louis doesn't normally lead, but is this another opportunity to chance your arm? Yeah, I think so. Um, he led in his first eight of the end of minion and it got caught right on line. So I think that, you know, if people think he's not a leader, it's not true. And I think we'll see that on Sunday night. I'm, the, I'm one of the ones that doesn't think he's a leader. So you're just telling me it's it's just untrue. Like, it's just it's fake news, is it, Jack? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yep, 100%. And my, the other question is, early in his career in New Zealand, you know, he won over longer trips. But a couple of times he's been over – I know that everything went wrong and the blacks are fake, but he didn't look like he stayed the Inter-Dominion Grand Final. Uh, I wouldn't be taking that into any consideration. Um, you know, the times they ran – in that race were unbelievable and he got beat two lengths by King of Swing and if King of Swing was in this race, he'd be a dollar four. So, I, um, yeah, wouldn't be reading too much into that, Jace. Jeez, I've been wrong. Twenty, he's gone back to G. He's got a bit serious there. He's gone, <laughs> Jace, you've said it. You've said parked outside me twice, brother. No more J-Bond for you. Andy, um, maybe we've been told because Spirit of St. Louis was the only one that I thought Torrid Saint might hand up to. At very worst, your three poles – and I still think, particularly after talking to Greg on the radio today, he didn't give me great confidence with Triple Eight. I think you're the one to beat. Open thirteen dollars, Tango Tara. Yeah, he's had a couple of little issues and a couple of little setbacks, but we also, you know, we trialed him on Tuesday and really happy with his trial. You know, but a nice up and coming horse in the trial. So um, yeah, so no, we're pretty happy with um, yeah, you know, it, it's a draw that could work in his favour. Even if it's three fence at Benny goes, still a really good place to be. But, you know, Torrid Saint, my chances are, if it gets a soft lead, it's got really good gate speed, so it might get a sort of slow lead time. It might be happy to hold the lead and we could be fenced behind the leader. But, you know, Spirit of St. Louis is probably the only one he'd probably hand up to, I'd say, if he does decide to hand up. Well, based on that trial, he's got to be about, he's got to be very close to 100% right now, doesn't he, Tango Tara? Oh, yeah. And, you know, he's had the setbacks. You know, he's going into this race 100%. So, um, you know, we expect him to perform at his best. Um. It's such a hard race to be there when you're not at your best, so he'll be 100% at his best. I've backed Triple Eight and Tango Tara, and Greg's given me the cold shoulder with Triple Eight. If you'd done it with Tango Tara, I'd have been pretty upset. And yeah, and I reckon Sal should flick you something because Lockenvara needed a pretty solid trial, and you gave him one. Yeah, no, we did um, try to help Sal out a little bit there. He did flick me a message during the week and ask him what time we are going to run. I said, oh, we won't go 155, but we'll go pretty solid for you. So, um. Yeah, we needed a good hit out too, and you know, obviously Lock and Varada was a perfect trial for him, and hopefully we'll see him on the racetrack at, you know, Shepparton Cup time. Talk, you've been somebody who has purported the notion that Torrid Saint might lead in even better races at times, so what happens here? I, I mean, he don't, they're not going to beat him out for speed. No, I, I have been. We, we, I can't remember the race, but we discussed it, didn't we, at length, one of the races, at, I can't, Victoria Cup or something like that, where I thought he might go all the way, and... I reckon he might try it again here. I was trying to find a leader. Um, I think Spirit of St. Louis or Spirit of St. Louis, I think is uh, some people prefer, might be the only one. But um, they've got a couple in the in the race too, Douglases. So, yeah, I don't know. And um, I'm not sure about the, the early speed. Uh, sorry, who leads. But uh, the first thing I thought of when uh, the draws come up, Andy was um, going back all the way to Tango Tara's first Australian start when um, – we all know what happened there, and I thought it might be a chance for you to um, turn the tables on him. Yeah, I, I won, I think, by memory. <laughs> uh, no, we saw it on the slow. We saw it on the slow mo. We saw it on the slow mo. Uh, Torrid, Torrid Saint never broke stride. It was beautiful pacing action all the way through. I wonder, did you see that one live, Jack, or not? Yeah, I do remember that. Actually. He does remember it. That's fantastic. It's wonderful to see. I was real keen on Triple uh, Eight. I was going to make him one of my. Well, I was going to make him the best of the night. What has Greg oh, said? I don't know. I think he's. I think he's had an easy week since coming back from the Inter Dominion. He's a horse who gets. I think he gets away from him pretty quick. He's uh, pretty good on the tooth. Old Triple Eight, old Bart boy. So uh, yeah. 
Tell them that my money's already on. I've got oh. a committee thing not, not to, to put the money on before asking participants so I don't get any, you know, and that's why I don't own three houses. Anyway, maybe I'll change my tack at some point. Best bets, everybody. Jack, who's your best on the card? Um, I haven't got one for Ben yet because I don't really know what I'm talking well, about. Give us one somewhere else. I think Sun Beach Shadow in Sydney on Saturday night will win again for Jason Grimson. What's a nice little link? It's a former Victorian horse, so you've done a nice job there. You just give, yep. yourself a, give yourself a big pat on the back there, Jack. Um, You're most welcome. Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a very polite young man. Um, talk, best. Uh, Friday Hanover, but she'll probably come up really, really short. It was going to be Triple Eight. Uh, I'm going to stick with Triple A. I think he's about $4.40. I don't care what Greg says. It's going to win. Uh, won the Caduceus Classic there. Should have won the Victoria Cup at Bendigo. Uh, just going really well. And if there's a bit of speed on early, um, just going to lob in a beautiful spot somewhere there and pop out at the top of the straight and win. So I'll go Triple A. Um, and by the way, Jack's told me I'm wrong a couple of times in his burning questions. If you think it's Spirit of St. Louis... Well, you're wrong. It's just Spirit of St. Louis, so that's it. So you don't you don't get the option really to, to decide how you want to print. Anyway, uh, my best bet on the program, you've got to wait for prices, but hopeful beauty, second line draw, I know. Just missed out on a run in the Mulry Mile. Beat on Rudy Jet last time around. I think she's headed places real fast, and I think she'll win regardless from the second line draw. APG, what are you doing as your best? You want to start 2021 strong. Well, I generally and don't. Too, as a matter of fact. I generally don't like tipping in races where I've got horses in because I've got a horse in that's probably got a winning hope in Ember, but she probably just a run short. But I think Shay Allen in that race has just been gone terrific throughout the Vic Red series, and I just think she's going to be a good each way price. And, you know, I think, you know, she, she'll be overs hopefully, and I think she'll get the job done. Well, we're simpatico again. I know you don't like agreeing with me, but it's a couple of times again. Kat, Kat, will Ember be rolling forward? Yeah, she'll be going forward. She probably... um. Won't go as hard out as we did first up with her. She sort of over raced and she had a sort of grade three bleed. That's why she's sort of been off the scene. But she trialed okay during the week and she'll be fitter for that trial. But yeah, she probably uh, still a one, one, one short, I'd say. Campbell Brown's literally on his second meal in the last five minutes in the next studio. What he plays. Uh, well done, Toc. Did you enjoy that, you, the comeback? Good to be back. Very good to be back. Hopefully I can hold me spot, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, Andy, well done, mate. You, you, you'll be smiling for the next 20 minutes after seeing me, won't you? You're smiling still now. Oh, that's it, yeah. It's always a pleasure, you know. I, you know, have restless nights on Wednesday nights waiting for this to come around. And Jack, well done. Great debut, mate. Good to see that smiling face of yours. Are, are we all invited? When's your 21st? Are we all invited or what? Uh, we'll see how we go on Saturday. I'll see if I'm busy. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Well done. That's been Burning Questions. We're kicking off 2022. First of three big regional features in Victoria to start the new year at Bendigo. Hopefully we found your winner.